high learners we are going to see k means a solved example in this session just a recap of what k means refers to it's a unsupervised clustering algorithm in the sense that given a data set without any output attribute the only possibility that we can do with that data set is grouping or otherwise called as your clustering very simple it effective clustering mechanism which works on the principle of means identifying the means of the cluster let us see the flow of k means algorithm so if we have to initialize k which is the number of the clusters we want so and we have to randomly pick up k leaders for the process to start with then from the data set you have to take every instance and then you have to identify to which of the uh, leader the instance is closer with and then you have to assign it to the corresponding cluster this you have to repeat for all the instances that is available in your data set once done you have to identify the centroids of the clusters what is a centroid it is nothing but summation of all the val attributes corresponding to a cluster divided by the total number of elements in the cluster which is nothing but the mean so that becomes the centroids of the clusters once done that now these centroids become the new leaders so with this new leaders again you have to identify which of the instances are closer to these centroids and you have to repeat the process for the entire instances of your data set if you are getting the instance to be the same in this iteration and the previous epoch yes you can stop stating that those are the identified clusters or else you have to go back repeat the same using the new centroid clusters and assigning the instances to the corresponding clusters whichever is nearer so this process will continue until either of the one happens the first being the clusters remain the same in the subsequent epochs or if it goes on infinite you can stop with specified number of iterations let's say if you fix up 10 iterations is more than enough you can stop with that instant test by using any of these distance measures minkowski manhattan or eclodian minkowski is a more general one where p root of the difference among the particular instance from the centroid will be taken manhattan is just by substituting the value of p as 1 in the minkowski distance in order to remove the sign problem we will just take the absolute value eclodian is similar to your root mean square error formula that we that's what we call it as eclodian distance either of the one distance formula you can use for identifying the dissimilarity between the instances so let's take one example and try to find out how it works so i have assumed this data set where i have two attributes attribute 1 and attribute 2 and we have eight instances so and the values are given like this so this these are all numerical values if you have categorical values by using one hot encoding you can very well convert those categorical values into numerical values and this is the distance matrix that we have calculated since the distance between 2 to 1 is same as 1 to 2 we have filled up only the upper half of the distance matrix it is a symmetrical matrix and the distance between that element to that element remains zero and hence the diagonal remains zero so okay and how to compute this so this is the distance measure or the difference in the uh, distance between element 1 and element 2 so take these two elements what is the difference between these two it is zero plus the difference between x to 10 minus 5 is 5 so the whole square which is 25 take the root for that it is 5 similar to that this is the first row followed by third column that is the distance measure between first element and the third element so you have to calculate the distances between 1 and 3 so uh, the first attribute remains to be 2 minus 8 the whole square which is 6 square 36 then you have 10 minus 4 the whole square which is again 36 36 plus 36 it is 72 when you take a root it comes around 8.4 something likewise this matrix is being formulated the first epoch starts with initial random pick up of k and the corresponding leaders so i have initialized the value of k to be 3 k is equal to 
three and hence three leaders have to be picked up from the data set either you can pick up from the data set or you can pick up values at random anything among this range now i have picked up three representative leaders so 8 comma 4 is the first leader then 2 comma 5 is the second leader and 1 comma 2 is the third leader so three leaders i have chosen and how to identify the difference or the distance difference in distance between one element to this again the same so you can see one first element values being 2 comma 10 so this one element will be given by 2 comma so the first element is 2 comma 10 so you have to find out the difference uh, euclidean distance between these two the distance measure will be calculated like this 2 minus 8 which is 6 squared 36 10 minus 4 which is again 6 squared 36 if you sum up both it is 72 if you take a root it comes around 8.485 similarly all the elements have to be identified uh, the difference between their first centroid second and then third okay now how to find out into which of the cluster it has to move on the if you uh, take the first uh, element to identify into which of the cluster it should move you identify whichever is minimum first value is 8.485 second is 5 third is 8.06 which is minimum 5 which falls into second cluster it means this is closer to this corresponding cluster and hence it is allotted to second cluster similarly the second element if you take 0 Zero means it is the same element, so it falls under second cluster. And then if you take third again, two first cluster it is zero, so it falls under first. Similar to that, you can see the eighth one if you take, which is the minimum among among uh, these things, it is four point four, so you can assign it to the second cluster. So when I rewrite cluster one, it is three comma the points three comma five comma and six. Similarly, in cluster two, what are the elements that are in cluster two? It is one comma two comma four comma eight, and cluster three has only one element, which is seven. Okay, so these are the clusters that is being formed. Now we have to find the centroids of the clusters. The centroid of the first cluster, you have to take the points three, five, and six. So the values of attribute one values of 3 5 and 6 has to be summed up divided by total number of uh, elements in the cluster which is 3 that will be around 7 similarly attribute two value of 3 5 6 6 what is attribute two value of 3 5 6 6 3 is 4 5 is 5 and 7 is 6 is 4 so 4 plus 4 8 8 plus 5 13 so 13 if you take 13 divided by 3 it comes around 4.33 similar to that centroids are being calculated with this this centroids become the leaders for the next epoch okay so this is epoch 2 and whatever centroids we have calculated those becomes your leaders now the leaders got changed since your third cluster has only one element so the cluster remains same and hence we have left it as such all the values are also easily computed similar to that the euclidean distance formula is applied and you we end up with this formula and again find out whichever is minimum 2 is minimum so we assign it you look at here 3 is minimum 3.16 3 is minimum and hence we assign here similarly we have to assign all and finally eighth if you see 1.25 is for cluster 2 and hence see it is the, with the simple formula that we are going to assign a data point to the cluster which is nearer that's all Similarly, what is the new clusters that is being formed? Three, five, six, one, four, eight, and the third cluster now has two elements, two comma seven. In the previous epoch, it has only one element, seven. Now it has improved to two plus elements, two comma seven. Again, we computed the cluster centroids, and these becomes the leaders for the next epoch, epoch three. Okay, so these becomes your new leaders. again the same process continues now you see we end up with the same elements in the clusters once it is done see 3561482 it's the same is in epoch 2 also you could see yes if this is the case we can stop iterating finally follow the compute the centroid to find out sum of squared errors if somebody is in need of and then centroids are being calculated so 
This is the case in third, second and third epoch result in same clusters, hydration is being stopped. Now, let us go and implement the same data set using SKLearn, train the model using k-means clustering and find out whether we can end up with the same elements in the clusters or not. As usual, I have imported the libraries and then I have created the data set. Attribute 1 values attribute to the values since we want to make the pairs to create a data frame i am using the zip operation what is zip it will just create the pairs it will apply this formula what is the formula attribute one comma attribute two it is create it will be creating the pairs for all the values that are there available in the list that's the use of your zip operator so data one is the output of that we are creating a data frame with the column values as a1 and a2 which is attribute 1 and attribute 2. I just have printed you can see the same data set which we have taken in excel. Okay. Now I am converting this into an array so that we can feed it to your sklearn library. Yeah. From sklearn.cluster import k-means. k-means is a package which is already built in using to use the K means algorithm okay? and I am going to create the number of clusters or initialize the number of clusters to be 3. So you can set it to anything you want. Since I am going to map it with the manual workout example, I am setting the number of clusters as 3. Okay? K means dot fit of X, meaning that it will fit, try to identify the clusters and everything will move on. Then we are predicting the X, it is nothing but moving out the cluster numbers to a particular variable. If you print, you could see into which of the clusters it has been identified. First cluster, let's say, all are labeled with 0. So what are all the elements? 3, 5 and then 7. We'll go back, look at the PPT, which we have. 3, 5 and 6. The same is there here. It is 3, 5 and then 6. And what about cluster 2, which is specified by the value 1? It is one cluster number one, point number one, point number four, and point number eight. Okay, I hope the same is there, 148, and the rest of the two is in cluster three. Yes, we got the same output. And if in order to print your centroids, k means dot cluster centers, the same value. Okay, you can see 7.43, 3.69, 1.5, 3.5. Those becomes your cluster centroids now. So if you want to print to check whether the clusters are being formed properly, we can draw a scatter plot and with the centers being visible in a black color, with the centers being visible in a black color, see this yellow represents, this yellow represents one group and this is the centroid. This represents the second group and this is the centroid. And this represents your third group and this is the centroid. Okay, and hence clusters are being formed. Thank you for listening. Hope you have understood well. Thank you.